Hello everyone, today we are filming another recap. If you haven't seen the first one, basically recap is an acronym that is going to switch up every single time, but you guys seem to really like this format and I'm definitely excited to explore it and include more overlaying footage, vlog footage, just things to help kind of paint the picture so I'm not always like sitting in the same spot. I do think there's room for a lot of freedom in this series. For today's recap, R represents relationships. A couple months ago, Phineas and I celebrated our five-year anniversary, which is really crazy. Time goes by so, 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 so fast. Every year it just gets faster. <laughs> I get so excited to talk about my relationship and talk about how to have a healthy dynamic and healthy communication. I think it's just something that at this point we've really mastered. My communication skills as a partner are so different today versus the first year that we started dating and I've just learned so much along the way. So this is truly like one of my favorite topics to talk about. So I thought for R, I would propose a question to you guys and ask you if you have any advice you want for relationships, whether it be partners, family, friends. The first one, how to know if it's love or attachment. This is a really great question. I think it's about, oh, there's so many things to say. The first thing I'm thinking of is how it feels. Love should feel very free. Confident, secure love should feel very free and very safe. And I think attachment oftentimes is a result of, at least in my experience, some sort of baggage that comes into the relationship from the past. And I can say that on my own behalf. I used to be a huge people pleaser and ultimately diagnosed myself as slightly codependent. It is this desire to control your environment and feel safe within your relationship. I would people please because I was too scared of upsetting someone or letting them down or disappointing them. It really gets in the way with your own boundaries and recognizing that you deserve unconditional love. So I think oftentimes times like attachment can manifest from other things that just haven't been worked through. I think it takes a lot to recognize that within yourself or within your partner and the way you get through it is just communication. How do I express my feelings to my significant other without feeling guilty or scared? It can feel so scary to say what's on your mind because you have to be okay with causing conflict sometimes or letting that person down. I have always believed that if anything is coming up for me personally, the sooner I say it, the less of a deal it is and the sooner it can be resolved. I just think resentment and holding on to things, it doesn't do anything good for you. It doesn't do anything good for the relationship. No one can read your mind. You can't read their mind. They can't read yours. Another huge communication hack is to always speak from your own experience and your own perspective and saying, when you said that, it made me feel this way. Instead of saying like, you're an asshole. Because oftentimes we're all just perceiving things a little bit differently and maybe they did not mean to make you feel that way, but it's how you interpret it and that is just as valid. It can feel terrifying, but it really is a muscle and the more you do it, the easier it gets and the safer you feel to do that within your dynamic. What do you think about friends with benefit type relationships? It is definitely possible. The thing I would argue is, or, or just warn I guess, before anything happens you should ask yourself, am I willing to lose the dynamic that I have with this person right now in the event that one of us grows you know, more feelings for the other. You just have to be willing to sacrifice that. It's possible, but proceed with caution. How to get out of the roommate phase when living with a partner get the spark back. It's so easy to just be on like autopilot mode <laughs> when you're living with your significant other because obviously you're just like going through the daily routines. I think setting aside time to actually go out on a date, like staying home, laying on the couch watching a movie, yes, it is a date to some degree and it's sweet and you're carving out time to maybe not have anyone else over or go anywhere else, whatever, but it's still happening within your shared space. It's just important to always remember each other that like they are a priority to you and you're a priority to them and the only way you can do that is to make the same amount of effort that you make when you hang out with your friends green flags in dating Ooh, okay i love this question i feel like it's usually red flags but green flags there's so many huge green flag is if they are super sweet and respectful and thoughtful towards anyone that they're interacting with 
in the service industry or any stranger, anyone that's like standing in line next to them. I've gone on dates where the opposite person was rude to a waiter and it's just so embarrassing and so cringy and you're just like doing that smile where you're like, I swear I'm not an asshole. Another green flag is if they've gone to therapy, sorry, sorry. I really just feel that way, I really do. I really love humor. I think humor is so, so important in life. Type of humor is also important too. I, I just love when anyone is like quick on their feet and clever. It's like the ultimate sign that they're present with you and engaged and want to make you laugh. I think it's such a sign of respect when someone wants to make you laugh and, and vice versa. How do I know who is right for me? The person that is right for you will make it abundantly clear that they are into you. I think that was like the big, one of the biggest lessons I've learned in my 20s. I would chase people that gave me enough clues to tell me that they're into me and they're attracted to me, but were not ready to date me or the timing wasn't convenient. The right person is not going <laughs> to make excuses. I really think that's the biggest thing. How do I accept my friend's relationship? I know it's childish, but I'm afraid she'll forget me. The honeymoon phase is such a real <laughs> season of falling in love. I certainly feel like I dropped off planet Earth and so many of my friends have gone through that where like, they start dating someone and you're like, okay, I'll see you in six months, you know what I mean? And I think just like recognizing and holding space for that person. And here's the thing too, I've been both parties, right? And I think when you're the one that's in the relationship and you feel like you haven't seen all of your friends, it can feel really scary because you're just trying to balance your excitement and your work life and like everything else that has to be higher priority to going out and like getting lunch with friends and stuff. Your friend is for sure definitely like, oh my gosh, I'm being a bad friend, I'm not reaching out enough. I think as a friend now on the outside of it, the best thing you can do is literally just remind them like, I'm here, I'm so happy for you. Whenever you wanna hang out, I'm, I'm around, but I like totally get it. Like just holding that space Everyone's like honeymoon phase is different, whatever, but life is long and I think when you zoom out Everyone just like experiences things on their own timeline how to keep a good relationship with your parents Recognizing that your parents don't have all the answers. They don't have everything figured out It's also crazy to be older now and realize like oh my gosh at this age like my mom I think she already had like both of my brothers definitely my first brother and that is so crazy to think about I think that's the first thing is just like recognizing that they feel just like you. Time just goes on and you're like, wait, I'm still the same. I feel 17 and I really think that just continues as you get older and we are all just humans figuring it out. So that's really important. And then secondly, this kind of gets into like different generations, but like my parents didn't go to therapy growing up. And so there are certain tools that I feel like I've unlocked that work for me and holding any sort of expectation on your parents, it sets you up to be be disappointed because you can't change anyone and you can't expect anyone to like necessarily be eager to jump on whatever mental health train you're on and the thing that you can do is control your emotions your reactions and also your own boundaries i have a genuine question about a breakup it's been a week since my first breakup and i don't know how to deal with it we've been together for almost seven years split up and after a week i'm not that sad anymore i think i should be but i just don't and it makes me feel like i'm the worst person on the planet we've been having troubles lately and still it's been a shock for me yet I'm not that sad is that normal I think that's so normal I think the important thing to also remember is like this might hit you in three months the advice I would give myself is let yourself have whatever emotions you're having and let them wash over you and don't suppress them I feel like suppressing and avoiding anything that's coming up is just going to build it tighter and stronger in your chest and in your body let that out and and reach out to friends and family and talk through it seven years is a really really long time your body is probably just fully in like shock right so it doesn't necessarily even know how to feel because this is such a new feeling for you it's certainly a huge life adjustment and so I think just being kind to yourself and knowing like that was a really long relationship. It might take a long time for me to like find my balance and sort of how to find that closure for you.
E represents what I've been eating. And I thought it'd be fun to do a little farmer's market haul featuring my mom. She's in town. Hello. You guys know her. We got some organic carrots. Peppers. Sweet peppers. We got a couple apples, two different variations. A pear, one single plum. Plum, plum, plum. My mom doesn't, she's, she doesn't fully understand this, but I'm gonna. You have to like prove it. I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm forgetting the types of persimmons these are. It's like, it starts with an H. I'll put it up on the screen. You wanna get these types of persimmons and wait until they are super ripe. So, so squishy to the point. So squishy. Like alarmingly squishy. Um, what you do with these alarmingly squishy persimmons is you pop them in the freezer and the way that they freeze, when you peel off the skin, it's like sorbet. It's frozen, peeled back the skin. I hope it's the right. Oh my God. Yeah? Oh gosh. <laughs> oh my God, so much. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. It's like ice cream. I can even eat skin. It's like sorbet. Care. Cheers. Cheers. A salad mix. Kenter Canyon Farms. I love their salad mixes for any of you that live in LA. They come pre-washed, pre-mixed. They throw herbs in here. A lot of them have wow. flower petals. They just last so, so long compared to grocery store lettuce. I don't, I don't know what that's about, but it lasts a really long time. They're really good. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Yum. A cantaloupe, or is this a melon? Cantaloupe. Freshly squeezed orange juice. So good. They like press it from Mimosa. Sunday Mimosa. Of course. Oh, yes. This is from Mima's Kitchen. They make really, really good hummus, traditional hummus, as well as a sun dried tomato and basil dip. But those are just great snacks to dip into and eat throughout the day. There's a fresh pasta recipe that I really want to make for you, which is a bunch of shallots. You slow cook them so they get super, super sweet. Look at this distinguished gentleman. Shallots are getting sweeter and smaller. And you toss in a bit of tomato paste and capers. Wow. Wow. And that's it. And it's like this sweet, but also like bitter, dark, very flavorful sauce. Pasta's boiled, added it to the sauce with some pasta water to kind of make it a little bit thinner. It doesn't look the most appetizing, but I swear <laughs> it's so good. Delicious. Tastes like mushrooms. Mm. I get that. Wow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste like a marinara sauce. It looks oh, like no. it would taste like marinara, but not at all. No. And then we got some focaccia, just two slices. These are dried persimmons. Mmm, mmm, delish. Mmm. One of the recipes that I have been making a ton for breakfast is it's, okay. It's a really simple con concept. Like it's not anything crazy, but there is a bagel place out here called Courage Bagels, and some might say they're overrated. They're definitely expensive, but they're so delicious. And I've always been so scared of like cream cheese my whole life. Mm -hmm. I still feel that way. I tried like a cream cheese bagel situation sandwich with cashew cream cheese. When it comes to dairy, like certain things freak me out. So there's a stand at the farmer's market that we go to that's called Mort and Betty's. They have really, really good cashew cream cheese that reminds me of the cashew cream cheese that that other place uses. So it looks like this. So also this same place makes really delicious like mini bagels, not overwhelming oh, size. Mm -hmm. Obviously you do a slice of some sort of heirloom tomato. So we got two of these today. Olive oil drizzle and lemon drizzle. Wow. The olive oil and the lemon and then like a bunch of, you know, salt, pepper, any seasoning you want. Next level. Yeah, I think that's it. Anyways, C represents what I've been feeling comforted by. I have a running list. These are just like a few things that I've been keeping up with or adding to my routine. One of them is, oh my gosh, not waking up to that iPhone alarm clock sound that we all know that like triggers us if we hear it out in public. I just use like the sleeping feature on my clock. This one up here, when you use this feature on your phone, there's so many different options for sounds and the bird song one is so good. It's literally just chirping birds. It just feels so much better. And it's such a more like calming experience waking up versus like, dun, 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 dun. 
Also no coffee, I've been, I mean, I think I've been doing this for so long now, but coffee just has been freaking me out. Like it does not feel good in the chest. So I've been so on my matcha grind. Just being outside, like getting outdoors as soon as I wake up and like touching my feet on the grass. In terms of what most of my days look like right now in my life, it's so many emails. And I often fall victim to sitting down like in a random room, random spot, literally in the worst position. I will be sitting like this and I don't think to like stretch out my legs, like walk around, all this stuff, or like set any sort of vibe for myself. And I've really been trying to prioritize filling up a jug of water and like putting a pillow behind my back or I've been working like under an umbrella outside and playing instrumental jazz music just to have something in the background. And it's making this mundane, tedious, boring, but important part of my day just like a little bit more enjoyable. Okay barely drinking alcohol. I mean, listen, when I go out, every so often I'll have a glass of wine with dinner, but when I go out, I'm kind of at like a one drink, maybe one shot. One tip that I have for you guys, if you sometimes feel pressured to be drinking when you go out because it's like, a thing to do. It's like you've got a drink in your hand, you're twirling the straws, you're flirting, whatever. Something that I often order at the bar if I'm not trying to drink alcohol is just soda with bitters. I'm pretty sure that bitters are really good for your digestive system, just saying. I love the taste of bitters. It tastes like a cocktail. Then no one like asks you about it. Cause sometimes it's just like the annoying convo of just someone being like, wait, are you not drinking? And you're like, yeah, not tonight. And they're like, is this like a thing? Da, da, da. I've been feeling so comforted knowing that I always have earplugs with me at all times. This relates to going out, okay? I have this like tiny little plastic case attached to my wallet. So anywhere I go, I've got a little case of the earplugs and I feel comforted by that because bars are just like so loud or if you go to a concert and you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot earplugs. And I feel comforted knowing that I've always got protection with me. I don't know if this is the best setup. Hi, honey bunnies. So A represents adoption. So this is Moose. He is the newest member of our family and we officially adopted him yesterday, actually, but we have been taking care of him for almost three weeks now. Buddy, we made it official. You and Peach is past the trial period. Let's jump back. I'd say for the last six months, Phineas and I have been threatening to adopt another rescue to give Peaches a little buddy. And you know, Peach is obviously such an alpha big girl. We've kind of always felt that if we ever tried adopting a second dog, the dog would probably have to be smaller. And about a month ago, we were on a dog walk with Peaches. We were like talking about getting a second dog and Phineas said something along the lines of, you know, I honestly feel like we we could get a new dog next year or the following year. And my toxic girl math brain was like, next year, that's in three months. <laughs> That's basically today. So I did the very toxic thing of um, Googling rescues in Los Angeles. And uh, here we are. <laughs> Moose is a two year old, we think. We don't know his birthday. He might be one and a half, he might be two and a half, but he's an adult miniature pincher. Ever since we started talking about possibly adopting a second dog and knowing we wanted a smaller breed, I started doing research on different breeds and I just, I mean, for starters, miniature pinchers are really stinking cute, but they're such active dogs and I just felt like he would be a really good match for our active Peachy. You know, the whole point was to find a dog that would play with Peaches and run around the yard. I start Googling on that walk and immediately find the rescue, Tales of the City. And it specifically said in his description that he loves big dogs. And we were like, oh my goodness. We met Moose um, like five days later and we met him just as ourselves first for like 10 minutes. And then we brought the dogs together they went on a walk together and then we put them in this little play area. They immediately were just so kind and neutral with each other. They hang out for an hour, it goes great. Then we set up a second meeting at our house to see how Peaches would do on her territory, how he would do in our home, um, in our backyard. And once again, he came over for an hour. We just watched the dogs literally fall in love. These two are so cute together. The rescue asked, all right, like if this second meeting at your home 
goes well, would you like us to bring over, you know, his dry food and his crate and his bed and a few other things like his leash. So if it goes well, would you like to start a trial period, which was such a wonderful thing to offer. I don't know how many people do this, but I think when you have another dog in your home, it's like so important to see them interact throughout every single situation, feeding time, sharing toys, going out to restaurants, going out in public together. How do they do with other dogs on leash, off leash, all these things. And so basically we started a little trial period with this guy and every single day we just watched <laughs> Moose and Peaches just become closer and closer. They literally cuddle together on the couch when we're not looking. We'll just like find them downstairs and they're like, what's up? They rip around the yard and chase each other and they play tug of war together. And I'm just reminding myself that like, this may have not been the case with any other dog. I really like, there's something so special about these two. And I've just never seen Peaches interact with a dog like this before. So his backstory, if you're curious, he was found downtown in Los Angeles with no collar, no chip. The person who found him couldn't adopt him, I think because he like moved or lives in a different state. He found Tales of the City. They took Moose in and basically just wanted to be really thoughtful about like what family he goes to and they knew that Moose needed to be with a bigger dog and it was such a wonderful experience and we feel so lucky to have this little man because he is such a love bug. He just wants to like lay in our lap all day. He does the cutest thing on walks. Like he like turns and like looks at Phineas and I like every 30 seconds to make sure we're still there. He'll be walking and then he'll stop and like quickly jump on my knees to be like, hi, hey, hi, hi. It's like, he's like, thank you so much. I'm loving this walk. It's so sweet. You are such a little thinker. Phineas came up with the name Moose. We're spelling it like chocolate moose, M-O-U-S-S-E. Peaches and Moose, it's just a good vibe. And also the animal, a moose, so large. This man, so small. And for our last letter for recap, P stands for pinch me moment. Because earlier this month I launched a company that I self-funded and I've been working on for so long and I'm just so proud of it. I guess P could also be proud, but I launched a company and my first product, I wanna show it to you guys. I will be posting a video dedicated to Cycler just cause I have a ton of vlog footage um, where I can talk just like more about the process if any of you guys are interested. Cycler is a gender neutral, luxurious, refillable body care company. The first product is my nourishing and balancing body cream and it has banana flower extract, niacinamide, prickly pear. I will talk more in depth in, a, in another video, but I, through all my years of making YouTube videos, I've always wanted to create something and just get to explore like all aspects of designing a product and getting to like focus on branding and taking photos and videos and have poured so much love and attention and detail into Cycler. And I've always known if I was ever going to create a product, why not prioritize and be thoughtful and intentional with every single step. And so I'm just so excited to continue to tell the story and intentions with Cycler. And let me grab it, it's behind me. This is the jar. It's so big. <laughs> you can see the embossed logo right there. It's also very simple, but that that's part of the whole story of it. It's a refillable vessel that's meant to hold whatever you want it to hold once you're done using the body cream. And I'm launching compostable refill pouches so soon. And these are hand poured by order. It's just been a whirlwind. And the feedback from those of you who have purchased it so far and just like friends of mine who have tried it have all been so sweet about the formula and the scent and just like the experience and feeling of this product. I've just been holding onto this and nursing this for so long. Certainly a pinch me moment. Um, I'm excited to talk more about it. That's it for today's recap. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I can't wait for the next one. I'll talk to you later. Bye.